Hello guys, this is Clint Locklear from the Farmer's Grove and I'm sitting on the side of my house which is uh, not at the Farmer's Grove because we haven't built or moved over there yet. But I'm doing a series of videos just showing some different things about air propagation because it's it can be such a powerful way to make money and it can be a powerful way to extend your systems. It can get a lot of extra uh, productivity or production out of a system, but not in the normal way. And I think this is a good example of, of showing this. Now, this is a, a female Arctic Kiwi right here that is more used for nursery stock than it is fruit. Now, the male, which will actually pollinate this is already o over on the farm doing its little happy male thing. So this is not here to produce fruit, even though it does produce a little bit even without a male. So what is the production? And this is one of these things. When you're in permaculture and someone is in conventional agriculture, for one, I don't think we need to look at it like it's always a competition, but it's a very, it's a hard thing to talk about from a conventional reductionist way of thinking where you want to be able to break everything down on a spreadsheet and you're looking at something in very simplistic reduction way of looking at it. For example, an acre is an acre and an acre of corn, say you, you bring in 5,000 pounds of corn and you put it in a silo, that 5,000 pounds is the production. It's a very simplistic, it's, it's very basic. It's, it's when, you, when you look at production on a monoculture system that works, it's not gonna work in, in permaculture very well. And I'm, I'm gonna give you an example here really quick. Now let's say that I had the, the, the male kiwi here to give pollination and I continue letting this grow up the side of my house and I've got 10 pounds of kiwi. Well, 10 pounds of kiwi would be the production of this plant. But see, that's, that doesn't work very well in permaculture because when you, when you start thinking about design and you start thinking about uh, different ways to get production out of a plant, it's very different. Where if I was just, if a, if a university went to study someone that grew commercial Arctic kiwis, for an example, somewhere, and they had so many acres, they produced so many pounds, that would be their production. Well, as you can see, or I think you can, is we've got several clamshells that are air propagating this plant. Now, whatever the poundage of kiwis are that come off of this, that's one thing. That's a form of production. Now, the other form of production is I've got to trim kiwis, muscadines, grapes. I've got to trim stuff like that or prune it to make it produce better and better and better. So it, because you get so much volume of leaves and stuff and it just gets out of whack. Your, your, your actual quote, you know, pounds of fruit will go down over time if, if you do it that way, which it's fine to do that in a very natural system. But if you're wanting to like go pick the fruits, you've got to prune it. Well, because I know I've got to prune and I've got the main trunk of this Arctic Kiwi that's going up through here. And I've got two more that are right here. That's all this plant needs. Now, when, when someone that's going in and they're gonna prune a plant like this and they're gonna cut all these side branches off, that'll, that can be chopped and dropped and, and used to grow soil life, which is awesome. That most of the time that's just gonna be put in a pile somewhere on a regular farm and burned probably. But the, the, the idea inside of permaculture is you get all these different uses out of everything. So I know what I'm gonna trim from year to year. So not only fruit of Arctic kiwis, but I'm getting plants of Arctic kiwis. Now this, I'm looking at right now, six air propagators that are on here. And I can see through the clear part of these that they all have roots. So I've got six different plants here. Now, how, how in the world are you going to put that in, in a production spreadsheet? I mean, I guess you could, but it's not going to be the normal way that a farm looks at production. So when you get in these heated arguments with people about production that's in commercial agriculture, it gets very confusing. One side wants to look at something from a very stringent way and permacultures want to look at it from a more open way because we do stuff like this. So I'm sitting here on this plant, which is holding up Maybe since it's going vertical, there's probably three square feet that this is taking up. I'll get kiwis off of this, which we get to eat, which is a value. 
and then I've got six different Arctic Kiwi plants that I can move into my system or I can simply pot them up uh, and not, not this coming up spring, but the next spring, if I want to be an ethical nurseryman and not give someone this, something that's probably going to die if they don't take perfect care of it. So I give it a year to grow in the pot. I've got six plants of an Arctic Kiwi that I can then sell. So that would actually be part of my production, but not part of the production this year, like if I put corn in a silo per se. But easily, $10 a piece for Kiwis is not uncommon. You let it go for a couple of years, you can get 30 or $40 for them. You can let them get really big and bushy and strong looking, and you can do all this type stuff. But let's say it's 10, well that's $60 worth of production off of this three, three uh, square feet that is right here. But that's still really not true because I'm also moving and uh, putting a lot of comfrey over on, on the farm. And inside this three feet, which I just tore the end of this uh, comfrey leaf off of. I've also got comfrey roots growing all in up under this. So how are we gonna put that into the production of this particular plant? I guess you could. You could figure out that a, an average uh, Bakken 14 comfrey like this is gonna have so much roots that you can dig up and move and you could try to figure that out. Or you can try to figure out if you're taking cuttings off a of kiwi or air propagating them like I am. What is that gonna be plus the fruit? And then I'm not sure if you can see this right there. Birds nest in this thing every year. And they go around and they help me with uh, insect problems every single year. So not only am I getting new plants, getting fruit, I'm using the same three square feet to grow comfrey roots to move or I could sell them. It's also predator habitat and it just gets, and the more in depth you get in this thing called permaculture, the more you realize it's, it's near impossible to come up with what is the production of a permaculture farm or a permaculture system. So the reason I'm bringing all this up, when someone that you're talking to, like from a market garden says, I have this much production X, and what is your production? And then you go, because it's kind of the true answer from a permaculturist is, I really don't know exactly what my production is because we do so many different things. Like the banana trees that you see behind me right there. The value of those trees right there off of one this particular year, that tree has gained production of two other big ones that I could sell for 60 or $80 and two other small ones that I could sell for 10. So that's about $200 worth of added production from just one fiber banana tree plant right there. And as we could move around the system, it just gets more and more in depth about what it is because underneath the banana trees, I've got bee balm that I can sell as liners for a couple of dollars or a year later in a pot, I could sell for eight or $10. And I can stack all of these different things up inside of something. Now, I think it would be interesting if there was a, a permaculturist that maybe is really involved in the permaculture and they wanted to go around to five or 10 different places that were established inside of permaculture and do the accounting thing where they try to come up with a way of putting down all the different functions and what's that worth because I don't know how you can put a production number on the value of the plant that's growing, the, the, the bird nest always in that helps me with my predator control or how do you do the value of my chickens where they do the, the pest control and they, you know, they, they get rid of the grass for me, they give me manure, uh, they turn my compost piles. I don't know how you do all that inside of a production quote layout of an Excel spreadsheet. I'm sure there's somebody out there that can that could do that. But for the most part, don't get wrapped up into that because what you're doing in permaculture is so far advanced than, than a standard reductionist agriculture system of corn, soybeans, cotton, or anything like that, that when you try to, what, when you try to get into the, the box with them, it doesn't match. And, and to someone that only looks at the pounds that comes out of something, none of this makes any sense to them. You know, it really doesn't. So 
don't waste your time when it comes to that. Uh, definitely talk to farmers, absolutely. Most farmers are in the situation they're in, not because they like throwing chemicals on the ground, because they don't really have any other choice. They're, they're way in their, over their head in debt and they're trying to keep their land and they know they're not really making any money, but that's just the way that it is. So when it comes to your production, you can use air layers, you can, you can talk about the country roots, you can talk about bee balm or banana trees or, or, or whatever. And, and the more you stack that system together, it's, it's really, really crazy productive that I really don't know. And I'm not going to spend, you know, probably several hundred hours a year just writing down in a notebook to have a number to give that's going to change three months from now anyway on that. But don't get so wrapped up into what the production numbers is. Just understand what your system is supposed to do, what you designed it for. Is it meeting the design needs for you, the permaculturist, and be happy with what you have and let other people argue about is permaculture, can permaculture feed you know, the world if we didn't have monocultures? To me, it's a pretty simple yes. But it's it, more importantly, it's a way for a farmer to be able to actually make a living, have income, have a a better way of life as far as I'm concerned, a more stable and diverse way of life because just right right through here, not even counting as I kind of turned my head right there, I'm looking at uh, uh, an azalea bush, which is not a food or fiber or herb, but it is a reblooming azalea bush that I will have, that I'll be able to propagate about a couple hundred dollars worth of plants off of. Really, really simple. It may be up to three or four hundred dollars. So just within what you can see in this little bit of thing of the camera, that's really crazy productive as far as money because when you look at an average farm today, it's going to probably make somewhere between a hundred to 150, if they're lucky, two hundred dollars an acre. You're seeing this right here. So when you, when you talk about uh, productivity just don't get wrapped in it keep doing what you need to do and don't play someone else's game with someone else's rules and try to match them with something that's not even similar to what you're doing anyway I was just thinking about this I just thought I'd share that a uh, little bitty uh, thought bomb with you I guess and I'm gonna get these air layers off of my kiwis get them in pots and move around to some other plants